Okay. All good? Yeah. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Daring and Doing. I'm Will Hester and I'm joined by the brilliant Ben Bowman. Ben, we're fucking shit. Yeah, mate. It's been, a pain, it's been a painful few days. It really has. Pain. This week has just been like, it, it's been horrible, isn't it? It's been two London Derby defeats. Oh, mate. It's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's a tough one to take. It's, it's two of the worst games to lose within about three days of each other. So that is, I mean, I mean we're going we're to get into it again, like, in, or going to get into it in a minute. But the the fan reaction, it, it, it is frustrating, but I kind of get it because yeah. you're really hurting, aren't you? Like from, from losing these, both these games back to back, especially in the fashion we did last night. Like I can get the fan reaction, although I like strongly disagree with it. We'll go into it. Like we'll go into that soon. Um, but before we do that, how how's your week been, mate? It's been all right, mate. It's been you know how it is. You know how it is. Uh, I thought I was I was on the floor after Arsenal a little yeah. bit, and I yeah. thought you know what? I feel like a win against Chelsea can sort of almost not turn the season around, but like well turn the week around for sure. Like it it feels like it can it can I make a big so. difference. I thought you know I thought win against Chelsea and everything feels all right again, but. Our London derby record has been shocking. Um, it really, has. really, yeah, um, yeah. It's just not. It's not been great, is it, mate? Well, to be honest, I'll, I'm going to put my hands up right now, and I know that a lot of you are probably going to think, "Fucking hell, is he old enough to drink?" But mm. I'm really hungover right now. Like really hungover. And I saw <laughs> Harry Brooks tweet it, and I was thinking of doing the same thing, but I've never really got around to it. I saw so, like, that. It was the like a thread of the the game or how how we recover from that game and it's just him like drinking in a, in a bar um but yeah I, I got like ridiculously drunk yesterday and um i'm really feeling consequences to like to like today i got absolutely humbled by a vo like vo vodka bottle um, <laughs> yeah and humbled by I'm that's what we should have called the podcast <laughs> humbled by a vodka bottle <laughs> But I'm really not feeling well. Like actually, when I laugh, my stomach is like my, my chest is so tight. Um, so what I'm saying is, Ben, you're not allowed to be funny um, in this podcast. But oh, yeah, I've, I've... <laughs> what do you want me to do? Then? Impossible challenge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, try not to laugh. Challenge. <laughs> impossible, hard level, extreme. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I'm really not feeling good. But uh, yeah, Wait, but, I'm, but I, 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 it was a bit of a heavy night for me as well. I'm not gonna lie. I was at the game. Um, oh, of course you were. What time did you get back? Uh, to be fair, it wasn't too bad. I got back about half eleven, because um, that's the only good thing about like those seven thirty kickoffs um, is that you actually yeah. can still get home quite early. And we did leave just before the end of the game because it was just like it was it was one of those things. But it wasn't even necessarily about the performance. The atmosphere, like in the away end, for the most for the start of the game was right, but it, it became very toxic. Oh really? Um, yeah, it wasn't really enjoyable. I got into. I, I I really don't like doing this, and I, you you know what I'm like the amount of times that I feel like at Spurs I've wanted to turn around and say something to someone. Yeah. I I I, I, fight, I snapped yesterday. Oh really? <laughs> I'll be honest. I snapped. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It what was just after the first. It was just after the first goal, and um, I was just uh, there was a lot of negativity from the people around me, like leading up to the first goal. Anyway, um, there was a lot of like Levy out stuff. From like one person in particular, which was just like, come on, mate. What was he saying? Um, just like, just being really negative. And you know when someone just like won't let it go. And then, then there was another guy who was um, who was also being really negative, like a few rows down. And there was this kind of these other guys sort of sandwiched in between it. And I'm quite a positive person. Like, you know, I, I don't, if there's something to be negative about, I will, you know, I'll, I'll say it. But like, Sometimes when when you've paid the money for the ticket and that, and you're there, like what I don't really understand the point necessarily, or like what you're necessarily getting out of it. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I did I did kind of snap. What did you say? I, fuck off, you gimp. I just said shut the fuck up and support the team. Really? Um, yeah. Little what, hand what grenade. Did he then, say? And then turn back yeah, around. He hell, started. Mate. He, he started kicking off. I think he thought Elliot, who I was with, the guy said it, um, and then he started having a go at him, and then. It all sort of was just. I didn't. It didn't. Well, then the same guy like later on then got kicked out for like because someone else like towards the end of the game had sort of said had sort of said um, 
it was like he was getting really negative right at the end. And obviously the performance yesterday was shit. Like we all know yeah, that. Yeah, we yeah. can we can accept that. But he was being utterly negative. And some guy who because some people had left, um, he came up. Um he these guys kind of came up the row and um he basically someone he was going on about Levy or something again and the guy in front just went around said you're boring mate shut up and then he literally just like exploded and then got kicked out it started like he was trying to go for the other guy but I'm not usually like that I'm not the sort of person to be like um say something I find that sort of thing very uncomfortable as much as I'd love to I hate it but I was just like I can't do I like that was my like uh, one I can't do this anymore moment of the season I was just like yeah, I was just like, I can't have, I can't have this. Anymore. That that I guy probably that up. that guy probably ran the um what fucking Twitter account is it? it oh, Tottenham stop. away! Oh my god, I fucking hate. The, I don't know. I I always bite as well. They always like reel me in. Always, always bite. Um, yeah, and I, I just, oh, it's so frustrating. It's so annoying. Every time we we'll lose, or even when we're winning, go on, I'll go on Twitter, and it's just like. Fucking players aren't good enough. Andre good enough. It's so so frustrating. But again, uh, like I was saying, anyway. after yesterday, you were just like, you can't really come Kinda back right. at a moment. <laughs> yeah, Andre no. out, Levy out. Fucking get get him out of my club. Um, no, I, I yeah, you couldn't really argue with it yesterday. I was just like, oh fucking, might as well just stop going on Twitter. Sometimes you just got to turn it off. Just yeah, like, I try to, forget to about like, it. I tried to sort of stay um away from it yesterday yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. came back on twitter this morning i got back from the game i had quite a lot to drink i got a domino's (laughs) and i went to bed watched a bit of youtube and just went to bed i was like i did a match review like on the way back from the game um i and then i was just like right do that turn my phone off um and then just deal with it like pick it you know get back into everything in the morning yeah um but yeah, it was just, it was poor, wasn't it, mate? But it, we always say it, me and my mates who I go with always say it, the day out is better than the, the game anyway, especially when you go away. I mean, I've I've been to, how many away games I've been to this season? I've been to Fulham in the it's Cup, lot, Arsenal. Yeah. yeah, Fulham in the Cup, Arsenal, Wolves away, um, Man United away, uh, Everton away, Villa away, last night, um, and then I feel like there's one more in there. I've seen us win once, and we always say that the and the one day that the actual game wasn't was better than the day because we got shafted with trains and stuff like that. Yeah, was the Villa game? Yeah, <laughs> one four nil. Yeah, and he we started like laughing. Mum as well. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, mate. Yeah. Um, so well, Pro, yeah, Pro one of them aggressive in the uh, in it. Big man army <laughs> kicking heads in. I was just I just, I, I was just chat. like afterwards. Like I said, I don't. I, I'm not that kind of person. But I was just like, I, I've had. I was just like, it was like 20 minutes into the game. It was quite a good atmosphere in the away end as well. Like at the start of the game, everyone yeah, was very you could up hear it. Like, yeah, you could hear well, it. I was gonna say, like when I watched bits back this morning at the start of the game, all you could hear was the Spurs fans. Chelsea yeah. were proper quiet, and everyone was getting behind it and all that sort of stuff. And then all of a sudden, it was just like this explosion of negative. And there was what you know. The worst thing is, is when someone's doing it on their own, and yeah. he was like, "We want leave you out." We, we, and it was just like, uh... it was like. Come on. It was just like, no, 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 shut the fuck up. And it actually wasn't even him I had the issue with. It was another guy, really, the guy that ended up getting kicked out. He was like, we're just, we're fucking shit. Yeah. The oh, yeah. thing is, was, I can't really, funny. it's hard to like pinpoint where, where it went wrong. Um, it, like specifically, I remember like we started okay. I think like it, for, we're talking about the first couple of minutes. Yeah. I um, we just did. with, just in possession, like the tempo. And then all of a sudden, um, I don't know what actually happened. I'm I'm sure I remember. Maybe it was a missed pass from one someone at the back four or something. Just gave gave Chelsea a little bit of confidence, and they sort of grew into it from there. And they were just hitting us with chance after chance. Obviously, Van der Ven had that that uh, shot, uh, that like clearance off the line. Um, and then from there, you were just getting worried and thinking, when's the momentum going to shift? And we never really had like a big big chance, did we? Um, do you think that was no, our worst really, performance no. of the season? Or because obviously it's, uh, up with, it's up. I mean, we got what we got: Fulham, Brighton, uh, Newcastle, and then and then I think this was, is up there. What do you think? Yeah, they yeah they were all pretty poor, weren't they? They were all pretty poor. It was like I think this one for some reason felt. Although Newcastle was a proper battering, this one felt the worst. Like I can't really explain why. It just felt it felt very much like, especially after the weeks, a couple of weeks we've had with the Newcastle game. 
and then the Arsenal game, which, like I said, there was a there were positives to take from the Arsenal game, one hundred percent. But it was just like this one. Uh, the, 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 the kind of, there was there was positives to take from it, but also it was like it was very deflating. Yeah. Um, but this one, there wasn't really anything to take from it, it at all. We, we might as well and it was just like, up. if we'd have played well and like Pepe, because it was like we know what our records like there. And, you know, Chelsea, when you look at kind of the underlying numbers and stuff, they're not really as bad a team as is made out to be. And people have kind of pointed the finger and sort of poked fun at them throughout the season for the fact they've spent all this money and they're there and all this kind of stuff. But they are a promising team and they probably will go places, I think, under Poch. What that looks like is another thing. But I've always been pretty confident of that. So if we'd have gone there and lost, but actually really Petrovic was making save after save and all that, then you could walk away from it thinking, look, to our London derby record has been poor and to lose those games and to lose again and lose there as well because yeah. we've, we've what, won once in the Premier League era, I think, at Stamford Bridge. That would have been... It would have been tough to take, but you could have swallowed it and say, look, okay, we know we know where we are. We know this is a tough run of games. We're going into the end of the season now. You look to next year and think, hopefully this is a game that we win. But, it, mate, there was nothing to take from it whatsoever. Like, looking back at this morning, you know, what did we have? Like, 67% possession. Did nothing with it. Mm. And I couldn't believe it. Like I looked at the stats and it was like Spurs had 19 shots. I couldn't tell you a single one. Seriously? I couldn't tell you a yeah, I think so. Like it's 19 shots. I, could, I couldn't tell you like a big chance or like a proper, you know, a proper chance that we had. Um which is yeah, which is it's just not good enough in a game like this, really. Um we you know, we had some poor we had some shots from the edge of the box and hear that, but we didn't Petrovic didn't really make a save. Did he? Like, no, it was, one, it was one of them. And the thing is, with this Chelsea team, is that we know, and we know this from our experience with Poch, um, it from our time. Um, we set up in the way that it benefited Chelsea to, like the most um, out of any sort of team to sort of set up against. I, I mean, I'm yeah. wording this. My mind is um, the hangover is kicking in. I can't speak. That's what, but, <laughs> yeah. That's what Spurs does to you as well, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no. I mean, if we say we'd set up in a low block, or uh, and 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 which obviously we're never going to do, but that's what Chelsea have been struggling with uh, all season. But they are quite a transitional team, and they do like to hit players with the, with Cole Palmer progressing up the pitch with the ball. I mean, he's so good. That skill he did on uh, Emerson Royale, it's like ah, fucking hell. Like he's, yeah, he was, it was unreal. Yeah, he, 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 I mean, you could say you. I, I've never, I never really got the hype around Cole Palmer because I wouldn't really watch too much Chelsea games. And yesterday I was like, yeah, he, yeah. he don't really look like he breaks a sweat, does he? But um, yeah, even like uh, Madrid was having fun. He didn't really do much, Madrid, but he still seemed like a threat because he had space to get into. And if you sit, sit a low block behind him, he's so shit. Madawake, yeah. uh, uh, Cucurella played really, really well for Chelsea, I think. But again, when I looked at the when I looked at the Chelsea team, I was thinking, oh my god, this is such a team for the taking. And no one really sh showed up in the way that they, no one showed the bravery or the courage to sort of grab that game by the scruff of the neck. And you could see it in the body language of all the players. Everyone yeah. was, sort of, it was such a negative, everyone off the ball was in such a negative stance, almost shying away from responsibility. Um, and I think, and then, and then you'd sort of, I think the players would feed off that and just pass it backwards. And you saw how annoyed Ange got. Um, and yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's, it's, it was so frustrating to watch. It was so frustrating. Um, yeah. And pot doing the double over us, mate. It's just fucking so annoying. Um, yeah. But what it's do you It's not even like the first, the first game we kind of handed it to them, really, didn't it? And it's just yeah, like... exactly. I think, I think it's one of those things where we, we look back at that game at the time and think, wow, like that really sort of changed things for us. And if we'd have just won that game and got through that period with the, you know, the, uh, like didn't get the red card and stuff like that or didn't get the two red cards and the carnage of the Van der Ven injury. I saw a good tweet from Charlie Eccleshare. It was like, that game almost feels a little bit more pivotal now because that momentum would have carried on. It would have, there would have been a fall off at some point, but I think that did take a lot of stuffing out the wounds. And then that kind of has the knock on effect in terms of belief, like going into this game a little bit added to that, like the lack of belief in terms of the sense that we never really win there anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's cast. But, I think the stuffing has kind of been knocked out the whole team. So uh, Peter in the chat there said, I think the players seem resigned to fifth place. Only question is why he, he brings on players who doesn't fancy it or clear, or he's made clear he's not keen on, which is a fair point. If you are, by the way, if you're listening to this on Spotify 
or Apple. We're we're recording this live on YouTube. Um, so we will be kind of interacting with people in the chat. So if you ever want to get involved, we're going to be hopefully doing one of these maybe a week yeah, from now on. Involved, um, yeah. So come and come and join us on YouTube. But obviously, f still feel free to listen to this on Spotify and Apple as well. <laughs> um, and if anyone's in the chat or is on Twitter watching this as well, because we're streaming us on Twitter, please give us a subscribe on YouTube or yeah, follow on Twitter as well. Yeah, that yeah, a lot. Yeah. So I can see there's a good amount of people tuning in on Twitter, which is good. Um, so, but yeah, to that point. You're right. You could see it in Andrew's reaction, and uh, obviously, I was I was at the game, so I didn't hear the commentary. But it seemed like Neville was Neville was focused in on the kind of Andrew's uh, anger, wasn't he? There was a bit where I think it was where was it where Mudrick was down injured, and that was when Andrew was kind of yeah. really getting the yeah, message into the players, and he was really going in on Saar and Basuma and Romero. Was it Romero? He said it on commentary, but well, Neville said it was Romero. But I don't know. I, think I don't Romero think it was. was. I, don't I think, think Romero, Romero got caught in the crossfire. I think he was talking to the midfielders. Yeah, because yeah, Romero so. wouldn't. Why would Romero be passing it back? He was one I of the only people that. showing courage again, Romero. Exactly, and it's like if you can take any positives out of last night's performance, again, it was Romero, and I think again that solidifies why he has been for me definitely like our player of the season. I felt for him. I did really feel for him. I felt for Van der Ven as well. I thought I had a decent game. Yeah, but, um, I, yeah. It, it, it's interesting on the midfield thing because that. I mean, there was a lot of people that were talking about the potential lineup before the game. And I think that would have been my preferred front six, if you like, the midfield and then the front four. Uh, I wanted to see Pesuma and Sai in there together. I wanted to see Kulazewski in the 10. And Ange sort of said after the game, he was like, look, I tried something. I wanted to freshen it up and it didn't work. But you could tell like, it felt like what he was trying to get across to the players, they weren't taking it on board. And I think that, to me, when they were so clearly... It's almost like we've regressed a little bit in terms of our belief and mentality as much as anything because... You think about the start of the season, Postacoglu was essentially written off by a lot of a lot of pundits, the general mm. kind of football fan space really, no one was really having him. And you saw how quickly the players took to his kind of brave philosophy and, and the style. And it wasn't even so much about the system, it was just the fact that these players were doing things and being brave on the ball and, and playing the way that he wanted them to play. Whereas now you're not really seeing that as much. And I think this kind of run of games has almost taken the stuffing out the team a little bit. I think there was definitely a hangover from the Arsenal game. I wasn't expecting like a huge reaction last night because I think you're being unrealistic if you think that's what you were going to get. These players aren't robots. They are humans who will take a while to get over to defeats like that, especially when actually against Arsenal, we did sort of play in that way and didn't get the rewards for it. And I think that must be quite psychologically hard to take yeah, that's true, yeah. in such a big game going into the next one. And look, I'm not giving the players excuses because last night was particularly poor. And kind of your question at the start of this ramble from me was, do you think this was our worst performance of the season? I think it definitely felt like it for me because I think when you think back to some of the other poor performances i.e. the Wolves won maybe at home or the Wolves won away. The Wolves won away, you can 100% write off in terms of the madness that was happening around that time after the Chelsea game and all that sort of stuff. Um, the the Wolves home game was very poor, not many positives to take from that. But even in some of the poor performances, there has been things that you can take away and think, right, we can learn from this. The Newcastle game, they did a very good job on us. And right, okay, that maybe it's like, right, how do we figure a way around, how do we figure a way around this in terms of teams being able to figure us out and and how they want to counter press and stuff like that. Tonight, oh last night, there was there was nothing to take from it, really. Yeah. No heart to take from it. It felt very, very toothless. And I yeah. think that was probably the most concerned I've come away from a game this season because like like we sort of said that it and sort of from what Andrew was saying afterwards, in terms of he has to have a think about the way he sets us up and stuff like that. It just did not feel that they were getting across what he wanted them to do. Mm. Shouting and screaming at the midfielder saying, stop fucking passing it backwards. Play, play forward, play. He wants them to play with that bravery, but they're not really showing it. But I think that's not to say that he's lost their support or anything like that. I think these are just players going through a tough run. This has been the toughest it's been. It's pretty much been quite rosy in the garden for the most part yeah. of the season, even when we have had turbulent spells. Like you think about that run of games just before Christmas where we might not, we weren't necessarily getting the results. Oh, I'm not necessarily Christmas was okay, but that period in December, like where we lost to West Ham and a few of the games like that, you could sort of still see the they were trying. They, it just wasn't quite coming off for them. Um, and then it all sort of clicked in that Newcastle game at home where it was like that bravery and everything. It was like, you want to see us playing like that again. And um, it feels like that's gone away, but it feels like it's come at a point where I, I know I know we're still fighting for Champions League football, but 
it's come now when it can also be a little bit disguised by like a difficult run in terms of the fixtures as well. Like we've got to go to Liverpool on Sunday. Like fuck me, not Liverpool yeah, at all. It, exactly, really and it's not. like you can kind of give the players that excuse to an extent, but yeah, it felt very, very, <clears throat> very flat. I was defl- I was deflated after the Arsenal game, but for different different reasons. I was deflated last night because I couldn't I couldn't see it from Spurs, and no. that was frustrating, especially yeah. in a game like that because. Again, it will just come back to look. We ain't we ain't turned up in another derby. We haven't won a game against West Ham, Arsenal, or Chelsea this season. So, yeah, yeah man, it's a f- very frustrating one. And 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 I understand Angie's anger, but again, I think he's kind of got to look at himself to an extent in terms of some aspects, not necessarily the performance, but some of the minor details, which again have cost us <laughs> dearly. Yeah. Once again, um, well, that's that's what uh, the next thing I was going to ask. Uh, before I do that, I was I was disappointed with Kulusevski because I thought, like, mate, this is your chance to really, to really show why you should be starting over Madison at ten, and he never really got into the game. And again, with Kulusevski, yeah, like, I, f- I feel like he's he's a perfect mid. He, he's a perfect number ten for when we're playing counter-attacking um, football. Him progressing up the pitch with the ball and link, getting players involved. Yeah, because he plays, he plays with his head up and he wants to drive. Yeah. Yeah. And he drives. He's all about driving. But when you have loads of players around him, when he's trying to... He, he looks like he's quite... He, he like runs out of ideas. Um, but, I mean, I'm not just singling out Kulusevski. I think everyone was shy. Like, but, but I'm just thinking, thinking this was your chance, Kulusevski, like, to really prove that your future's at the club just in that attacking eight. And... Is look he didn't really grab that opportunity, um, but yeah, what what Peter Gordon said is a good point because I was thinking earlier, why why are they not showing this sort of courage, this co- the confidence that they they had, and and you made some good points in sort of why that is, but uh, do you think there's an element of obviously we know there's a big international tournaments coming up, do you think the players have a have and I'm not accusing them of, any, of anything, but th- there is a bit of security in the fact that. It looks like Champions League's out of reach now, all of a sudden. But yeah. Europa League is almost pretty much like sealed in the bag, and it doesn't look yeah. like Newcastle United are going to catch us. Do you think there's that sort of security of okay, this season's a bit of a write-off, anyways? But I'm not going to go 100 percent into these challenges. And then you look at Romero, who's a madman running around everywhere doing the strikers' job pressing. Um, yeah. But do you think there's an element of that of thinking I've got the international tournaments coming up? I want to save myself, or or do you think? Like, is it and is it a tactic, tactical problem or a player's problem? I think I don't. I don't think it's a tactical problem. And I think again, it comes back to the fact that people jump on. People are quick to jump on the fact that Ange has been found out and all this kind of stuff. I don't think that's true at all because we're one. We're one season or not even a season yet into this kind of project. And I think Ange was always going to be that kind of divisive character that people would turn on quite quickly. And that is happening. Like I said. In the away end last night, I think I was going to talk about this in a video tomorrow, but I feel like I feel like this is the most fractured it's felt since Postacoglu. And that's not even just in terms of results. I think people, are st- there are certain people that are starting to stop believing, which I think is poor, really. Yeah, like, I, I think agree. that's look, you. It, two things can be true at the same time. You can be really fucked off with a performance, like all of us were last night, but still be patient and not expect too much early doors because people's naturally people's expectations change throughout the season but you can't you can't expect too much too soon and we did kind of get carried away a little bit of ourselves but if you can't enjoy it if you can't enjoy the ride that we were kind of on then you're not a football fan really are you because you want to see your team playing good football and looking encouraging and going in the right direction which is where we were but it does feel like some people are starting to lose patience which was evident on social media last night the sympathy that I will give to those people in terms of losing patience is the small tactical details that are, are it's not even tactical, the small in-game details that are costing us this game, i.e. set pieces once again. Um, because if it wasn't for set piece goals, we would be in a much healthier position than we are now because it is costing us every single week now. Like you go, yeah. you can go back every single game over the last few and find a goal where we've conceded all just looked incredibly vulnerable. And if it doesn't go in, it could have done. Like it's what, like the Forest game, for example, there was a few there. Newcastle, how many chances did they want before they actually stuck one in the back of the net from set pieces? So I can understand the, 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 the lack of frustration around that. We weren't too bad in terms of the way that we controlled the play. Um, we just didn't look like unlocking them. And again, this game, Premier League football is about fine margins. It's a bit like international football as well. If you can't break a team down, make sure you don't gift them goals. If they can break you down, 
and open you up like Chelsea didn't really last night again at all. Chelsea played quite well, but they didn't open us up. They had that they had that chance which Van der Ven cleared off the line. That was a nice little ball from Mudrick. That was probably the best chance that they had. Madawaki had a shot just over the bar from outside the box, but it's not as if Vicario was making save after save again. And that's what's mm. costing us at the moment. It's just like we could have had a margins. couple more, exactly a couple more points on the board, even if we just drawn nil nil last night. Right, you can come away from it thinking, look, we need to find a way to break these sort of teams down and control these games and turn that control into being able to fashion it into creating proper chances and scoring goals like a team like Arsenal has done. But if you can keep them out at the other end, if you can keep them out on those set pieces, then at least you come away with that from a draw, with a draw. Like it's, it's, that's what I find incredibly frustrating, especially about the Arsenal game as well, because it's like we would have won that game. I think we would have won that game if we can keep those two goals out from those two corners. And look, the kind of butterfly effect of football doesn't always mean that just because they don't score those two, that doesn't mean they're not going to score another two or score one from open play. But just in terms of how we controlled that game in with the ball, Arsenal kind of kept us at arm's length. But it's the same as Chelsea last night. We might have controlled the possession like we did against Arsenal, but we didn't really properly lay a glove on them. We're just looking a little bit toothless up front as well at the moment. And when you keep, when you're not able to con- keep out goals at the other end, it's a mm. it's a huge problem um, mm. and it, a frustration massively. When it comes to like, sort of like the fan fallout, the reaction as well, I saw a, a good tweet from uh, Zeus on Twitter. I'm sure everyone knows Zeus, uh, Zeus is, but I can't remember like word for word, but it was something like, to paraphrase it, it was something like, um, I, I get why everyone's going into meltdown and not having the patience. Because I think someone said, like, Spurs fans just don't have the patience for, for a rebuild or, or the, the guts for a rebuild. And I think he said something like, I kind of understand it, though, because we've been burnt so many times. Like, yeah, we yeah. Have, and every time we're told, like, about a, a rebuild, um, obviously... It, it turns out to be shit. Like, don't like trust the rebuild. This is a new new era. It does turn out to be shit. But this feels different. It does feel different. And I, I because yeah. put it, it, but it, we've got such a young, exciting team now. We're getting in those te- technical players. We're getting in. We have, I know we've made a couple of like errors in, in signings, like players like Solomon, and et cetera. Um, but the the bulk of our transfers so far have been really promising the 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 the, the, pers- the personnel that we're linked with is really promising and it does feel like we're going in the right direction um as a yeah. as a club and it's our first season like we again uh, it, everything feels like be all or end all after every single game but hopefully in hindsight we're going to look back and think fucking hell this th- th- that was that was just a bad little spell but we've been so successful i mean i'm thinking about i'm thinking about arsenal for for, for for example, everyone's printing Arteta out T-shirts, and there was multiple occasions, season yeah. after season, where they wanted Arteta out. They could not see because, and I'm, I'm that, that's a much more sort of dramatized version of what is happening right now because I don't think anyone really wants Ange out. But what I'm saying is, is like you, you do. It's, is it okay? Is is it? Is there anything wrong in Downton and Ange? Do you think there is there is anything wrong in Downton and Ange? No, there's nothing wrong with Darren and Ange because that, if that if that's your opinion, then that's fine. It's your you, you're entitled to have that as a support of the football club. But but I just I don't agree, and I can't see it like that. And I think you have to have a little bit more patience. You can be skeptical, and I understand the skeptics, and I understand the skepticism, skepti- skepticism, Jesus, mm. around it, and I understand why people have doubts. But not yeah. I don't know. I, I, you're entitled to feel like that, but I don't. I I feel I feel like if you're if you're giving up this early and kind of think, look, we're done. We've been here before. Like, just give him a chance because yeah, that's I can't believe thing. we're kind of having to have these kind of yeah, conversations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, don't, I know what you mean. Frustrating. I, I I think that one of the main reasons this reaction as well is because how good Arsenal are at the moment, and and it's just hanging yeah, over us. The the anxiety of they're really in for a chance to win in the league. One, that's where we want to be, and two. You never want to see Arsenal. A world where Arsenal fans are happy is a world where I don't even want to be like existing. Um, and yeah, exactly. and and that's hanging. Like if say we were in this same same position, Arsenal were eighth. I don't think there'd be this massive fallout. But we're constantly comparing ourselves with Arsenal at the moment, who are about four years ahead of us. And again, I just yeah. think I just think like write this season off because we finished Europa League. We have. We we're gonna have to go through the Liverpool game. The city game, although we were all city that game, anyways. But um, and then obviously we got yeah. the Sheffield United and the Burnley game. 
in your head sort of just think, okay, let's look forward to the summer now. Who are we going to bring in? What players are we going to bring in? Um, uh, players that didn't have a pre-season under Ange, like Ben Tenkor, they're going to have a full pre-season. This is the time where we where we fix up the 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 small margins, like set pieces, hopefully. And you can just think optimistic about the future and not dwell in this in this moment because we always knew there was going to be there was going to be bumps in the in the road, especially in the first season. I mean, if I if I think the way I, the only way I doubt Ange Boscoglu is. If we're halfway through the season and we're still seeing these same like occurrences, like set pieces, etc., and then I'm thinking, well, yeah. th- then that's just naive. But I think now it's like he, and again, this it was proved yesterday with how angry he was. I mean, this season it's mainly been about just getting his philosophy into the team, and you can't really then abandon that to you want to get that perfect in training. You can't then abandon that to try and fix like set pieces, etc., when you you haven't got your main your main tactical um like the foundation set in place yet because you saw Ange Postcoglu and in, in his post in his post match interview he was saying well the players aren't hearing what I'm saying. Um so yeah he'll have another preseason and hopefully those those tweaks in in the sort of the gameplay the way we manage games the way we our physicality our, and our aggression in set pieces hopefully that's tweaked as well. Um but yeah it's, I don't think I mean I understand everyone being angry, but I don't think it's it's that necessary. I think I thought everyone was happy with Europa League. I think there wasn't, yeah, that, exactly. but it's just now we keep losing and we keep losing to our rivals, and now we're going to Liverpool. And it's just and Arsenal playing well, and it's just that anxiety sort of building. Um, but Peter Gordon, he said something else as well. Like Son was poor, but also seemed that no one wants like wanted to pass to him. Uh, so what was your thoughts on Son's performance? Because when I saw Son against Guildhurst, I thought, oh my god. Son's going to like eat him alive, but he, he there was moments in the game where again I don't know I think it's, he's like a microcosm of the whole team here with, when it comes to the confidence and and trying to express himself on the ball. He the amount of times you go one on one with Gilthurst and he just turn around and pass backwards, it was yeah. like infuriating. Like, what what's your thoughts on Son? Because I'm I'm not singling him out here, but he's the captain and he's getting a lot of stick on on social media. Do you think that's not stick, but the criticism? Do you think that's justified on on him as a captain? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have kind of been turning their attention on Sonny and looking at him as that kind of senior figure head of this younger team and thinking, well, why aren't you stepping up with the performances? And I think, look, he's been shifted up here and there, here, there and everywhere, really, in terms of where he's playing, out wide or through the middle. He doesn't really look comfortable as either at the moment, especially not up front. But you think yesterday with Richardson coming into the team, a bit more structure up there. But he just looked lost, Son. He just looked absolutely lost. And, you know, you hate to kind of talk about him in this manner because he's just been an amazing servant for us but it's just I don't I don't know I don't know what the problem is with him at the moment he looks devoid of a lot of confidence he's still been scoring uh he obviously got the penalty against Arsenal he got one against Luton but he's not he's not he's not they're not great goals are they we're not kind of seeing that same clinical Sonny that we saw at the start of the season where he looks so sharp in front of goal we're not really seeing that. Even the Luton one was that little bubble. Even though I thought he played quite well in that game, obviously the Arsenal one, the penalty, didn't have a sniff last night. Didn't have a sniff against Newcastle. Um, it's just looks devoid of any real confidence. And I think Sonny's kind of gone through these phases in his Spurs career of being that confidence player and being someone who needs to feel that love and needs to feel that. And I don't know, like I just I just feel like that's gone really with him. And it feels like a lot of these players are just sort of drifting now towards the end of the season um which isn't great but it, it kind of feels like that's where we are but again i think it's one of those things with sonny as well is that people say that oh you don't want people don't want to criticize him and stuff because you know he's a captain and all this but it's like you can criticize him but p- again people are just kind of going way over the top um his performances haven't been at the level that we need them to be and his yeah. kind of output has tailed off a little bit but you know, it, you know Hopefully we will see. I think the worrying thing with Sonny is that we're going to go. We're going to be back in Europe next season in some capacity, and this has been a season without Europe, and it feels yeah. like it's taken its toll on him quite a bit. Yeah. So I think you're going to have to be really careful about how you use him next season. And I think in the summer, part of our recruitment has to be that long-term replacement plan for Sonny, whether that's a striker or whether that's a whether that's a winger, someone who can cover off both positions. Or, or buy two players in those areas because yeah. he's going to be 32 in the summer, isn't he? And it feels like, th- it just feels like 
it's catching up with him slowly, which is which is horrible. Like Gary's just said it in the chat there. Sonny is shot for confidence. Play him in this form sends a message to the youngsters like Mikey Moore, Jamie Donnelly. We will use them in will you we will lose them and spend millions in five years getting them back. I don't think that's true because I think I, I, I completely agree in terms of him being shot for confidence, but that pathway is there for those younger players now, I feel like. But you can't take Sonny out the team to play a Donnelly or Mikey Moore, in my opinion. I think Sonny is available. I'm not saying that he shouldn't be benched. Um but I think it, I don't think it necessarily by playing the captain Sonny. I don't think it sends a message particularly. You wouldn't start Mikey Moore away at Chelsea. The under twenty ones were actually were playing last night as well. So Donnelly was playing. They've kind of got an important run in the Premier League Cup. They actually turned it around last night from three nil home to Forest, I believe, in one four three. Um, so you kind of got to let them have their paths as well, and not be too kind of influenced by what's going on in the first team. Otherwise, you're kind of just putting square pegs in round holes and kind of giving these players starting berths when maybe they're not quite ready. But I understand what you're saying. But um, yeah, Sonny, I, th I think Gary's right in the first sense in terms of him being shot for confidence, for sure. Yeah, but the only thing I'm thinking about is like, if we say we sign a striker, we sign a winger, say a Nico Williams at a, at a, at a box striker, like a big physical presence. My worry is like, where does Son actually fit in? Because obviously you need all your players and he's the captain and he's such an incredible player and has been one of our most important players for years uh, for, for the last how long has he been with us now like se six years seven years um yeah and and he i mean he does need to play like he's so good he's such an incredible player like you're just trying to think where does he fit in the system he's he's one of those players that he could play up front he has all the abilities to play up front but teams have now realized how to nullify him and that is just sit back and and almost bully him out of games but he's not the i mean and it was a perfect sort of that it epitomized um how he's not uh the dribbly winger or that he used to be or that sort of those step overs he'd used to do and get get past people with that that like turn of pace he was so good at that a few even like a few years ago so dangerous as a winger but i don't think he i think he's lost his confidence in in, in his ability to do that as you saw against Guilherme yesterday um the, i mean the last time we really we really saw that was against newcastle was against trippier um, and yeah. and uh, that's what you need from him if he is playing out on a wing. So I, I can't remember where I heard it, but I was listening to a podcast, and I thought, oh, well, maybe, maybe if we if we have it, maybe as a, a winger that's hugging a touchline on the right, and then Son inverts a bit because we all know Son's he's more comfortable inverting almost in in, in the space between striker and, and wing. Oh, someone getting behind, mm. um, asking him to have the ball and trying to get and beat one to two men on the wing isn't really his game anymore um and then, yeah strikers like when he's up front he can he can get like nullify he can be he can be sort of kept at bay with by like big big strikers um and yeah i, I yeah i don't know it's, it's it's an interesting one what changes would you like to see then going into the remaining fixtures because we've, we've actually before we talk about that because uh, Peter Gordon talked about Timo. We haven't had a chance to talk about Timo Werner. He's obviously out for the season now. Would you sign? Yeah. Um, I was quite big on the idea of making sure that we definitely do pick him up. But I think now is kind of a convenient reason for those people that were doubting him to sort of them to be a bit validated because it's like, how much are we actually going to miss him in these remaining few games? We You could argue that we missed him last night, maybe. That presence down that left-hand side. Um. I don't think if we signed him, I'd still be happy, but I don't think I would be as um, I don't think I would be as anti not signing him as I would have been at, at the um, a few weeks ago, a month ago. I think. Yeah. If we pick up, uh, it's it's got to the point with me where it's like if we pick up the deal, then great. If we don't, then move on and get someone else. Oh, uh, I'm I'm in the same boat, and it's also like down to almost like homegrown numbers. If we're struggling for homegrown numbers, I think I'd, if we signed Tim Werner, I'd be like. Did we need to do, unless we then get rid of like Solomon, Gill, those types of players? I don't know. I, yeah. I, but again, I'm with you. I'd be happy either way, um, or content either way, because I, I just think he has been really good. He's and Andrew said this. He said how he's been really, um, like really important to to us since he's come in. I mean, he's he's got what is it six goal contributions in the Premier League since he signed for us in like ten starts, which is really really positive but and he's been playing over he's been starting week in week out as well it's clear that Andrew really likes him but was he always just a stopgap for another player to yeah. come in and and just be an improvement on him and then bring in someone who's homegrown that can be like ha have that depth and attack it, it, it's a, yeah it's an interesting one but I'm not too fussed either way I'd be happy either way and because the price is so low I don't think it's a, a massive like impact um yeah 
So yeah, I was just going to say just quickly on Gary's point in the chat there about uh, Ange giving. So Ange has given youngsters less than 80 minutes collectively over the season. Chelsea's Gilchrist pocketed Son last night. Countless other kids getting played elsewhere too. I understand why people are frustrated about that, and we've spoken about it before. But I think this season for Postecoglou, and I think why the result last night was hard to take is because you could clearly see him trying to get that message across like we talked about earlier and it wasn't being taken in by the players. They weren't taken on board his instructions. I think this season, a lot of it is about embedding that idea, embedding that idea in the first team and then creating that pathway for the youngsters further down the line and it's easier for them to step in. And just only been here one year. If you want to look at Liverpool, a lot of those youngsters have had to be introduced because of injuries. Chelsea, the same. Look at their bench last night. It's because they've got so many players out injured. I'm not saying that some of these players should have had, shouldn't have had more minutes, but Mikey Moore's integration into first team training over the last couple of weeks will be really valuable for his development going forward. You've got to remember he's only 16. You're asking him to come on and make an impact in that game last night. It would have been tough. Like These players are having their own developmental seasons. Jamie Donnelly's first year in the 21s, really a lot of these players kind of making that step up from the under-18s. I don't think it's as simple as just like give these players a chance. We all want to see young players play because we've had a good history of these players coming through and you feel proud to watch them play for Spurs and represent the club and all those kind of things. But And, and that's what football fans in general want to see. But I, I don't think we should be too annoyed and poking the finger at Ange for not... not in embedding these youngsters and integrating them more than he has done. I understand the frustrations, but I just think that I think you need to kind of relax on that sort of stuff. I think just for now, they're all having great seasons in their own right. That will be very valuable in their development. A lot of them still need loans as well to get that um, experience of playing men's football week in, week out. So I get it, but yeah, I think we just need to be a bit calm on that. And I think because things aren't going as well on the pitch, I think people are turning to the youngster argument more and more because we're seeing them shine in their own league, which is a huge step up to the Premier League. It's a huge step up to the EFL, men's football anyway. So, yeah, I think I understand it, but I think that's just, I think it's kind of a, a frustration that's been placed because of how poorly some of the players are performing, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I agree. I, also, a game like yesterday, it's, a, it's not a nice game to throw a 16-year-old onto the pitch. Yeah. Uh, it, also, it's not, it's not like it's Gilchrist's debut either. Like, he's played quite a few minutes for Chelsea this season. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. not like it's his debut. And you're looking at him going, well, he pocketed Son. He's played quite a few minutes for them. So, yeah. I get yeah, it, but... Yeah. I've, 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 so, and so Peter's said about uh, we need a ball playing cent central midfielder like destroyer who can break a, a break the pop press and thread a, a pinpoint pass uh, but also like bang a 30 yard rocket i'm i'm pretty he's saying uh large will find a f f find someone for that for a tenner but that, that what you're who you've just described is rodri and he <laughs> will cost like 80 mil but yeah. um it's it's clear it's so clear that we lack technical players in the team, and I think yeah. Ange like knows that, and I think you could see it on his face that he was getting frustrated with with the players in midfield, who 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 aren't secure in their sort of like they're all great in their own right, but in possession they're they're not they're shying away from that responsibility of being on the ball part making. Uh, uh, they, I think they kept playing the safe option and passing it back, and that's why Postecoglou was getting so angry. Um, but someone that so, that takes risks in their passing or that those brave passes, like like Peter's saying, um, and and I think I mean obviously Bergvall's coming in uh, in the summer. Uh, you can't again; he's eighteen. You can't expect too much from him, but he is a very technical, sound um, footballer. Benton Core will obviously have a preseason under Ange, which he hasn't uh, so far, and and they're hoping that he'll be back to his best um, by the beginning of the next season. Do you think and do you expect us to then now focus on on buying more technical players in the summer? Um, because we've already been linked to technical players like Goodmanson from um, Genoa, mm. um, Eze. Obviously, we love Eze and. Uh, and there's other players as well. Like, have you got any su just suggestions? Uh, have you got any suggestions of like players that we should be looking for that would fit the system? And do you think uh, and do you expect Spurs to sort of focus in that area? Yeah, I think we kind of have to. I think a lot of the chat a few weeks ago was kind of that focus on players who are physically dominant, which is something we still need to figure out. But uh, again, that ability to read the game and also hold the ball under pressure. If you're a striker, that comes from technical quality as well. 
you know, that comes from real technical quality rather than just being that physical presence in midfield as well, partly. But you kind of need someone that can do a bit of both, which is why players like Rodri and players like Rice, etc., Paulinho are so rare. Um, I think we do lack that kind of. I think I think that that someone said in the chat there, Peter saying we lack steel. I think that kind of comes in mentality as much as anything as well, rather than just that physical presence on the pitch. Um, yeah. I, in terms of suggestions, like you said, Goodmanson's a good shout um, as a two. In terms of strikers, I think obviously Isaac is probably the most technical striker in the league, but he's also probably the best striker in the league right now. So that's just never going to happen. Archie Gray is a great shout from Matty in the chat. Someone we've spoken to, spoken about a lot in terms of their technical ability. Um, yeah, I, I think there needs to be a real focus on that, especially when that technical that technical ability and that presence of mind as well. Like when you look back at that second goal, and you've got Hoybier and Son kind of just pushing each other out the way, essentially, just, or Hoybier trying to push Son out the way to get to the ball and then not having that ability to read the situation and know that Son was probably best place to do that. Just like that sort of stuff makes you think, what is going yeah, on? Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I think Solanke again, Matt, he's a good shout in terms of strikers, in terms of someone who's been technical and can hold the ball up. A really, He is a good technician, someone who can really, uh, someone who's a great finisher as well. Um, yeah, I think... I think that kind of needs to be some of the focus going into. I I genuinely think yeah, like you're saying, uh, with the like we need to bring in personnel that that, that are so like physically dominant, uh, and I th and you're seeing so many teams that uh, in their scouting department go for those types of players, um, and there are a few players that. So I think we do need a ball ball playing uh, number six. I think Zubimendi would be the expensive version of that. Um, mm. You've said it a few times before, but I th I've got a feeling Arsenal might go for him as well. That's sort of Jorginho upgrade, but um, yeah. he's he's again. He, he, I mean, he can break up play. Um, he's physical. He's relatively tall. I think he's like five foot eleven um, to like six foot. But he he again, he's very sound with the ball at his feet. He wants the ball and he and he keeps it, the tempo ticking. He's so good at passing. Um, but I think the cheaper alternatives would be. Matt's Viper. I think I was thinking about Anana and I was so set on, yeah, let's go for Anana. But for 50 to 60 mil, I'm doubting that now. He's yeah, again, he's another one of those players. He'd be a destroyer, but he lacks um, that technicality and he's he's very inconsistent with his technicality. And, I, and I'm thinking Matt's Viper is a very, I mean, I'm not going to pretend I've watched him all the time, but from what I've seen of him, he does seem like he's very um, composed on the ball with his passing. Um, and he's also a destroyer, and he and he's six foot four, is he? And he and he covers the ground really quickly, and he he can make some uh, really good tackles. But he is, he can play it further up the pitch as well. Um, but yeah. he's twenty four Dutch, and I, I wouldn't, I can't see him costing more than thirty five mil. And you're thinking yeah. that's half the price of an Anna and 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 an upgrade on Hoybier and and possibly Basuma. It, it, it'd be interesting though because it's hard, it's so hard to predict. Players, um, their adaptability in the Premier League. You can sign someone from the area of Visa, and they can be shite. Um, but he's someone. Probably, I'm trying to think of those deals where you're not spending like a fuck ton of money on them. Um, Ivan Tony again. Yeah, I mean Ivan Tony's. Uh, Ivan Tony's a, a player that that has that physical dominance. But again, apparently he's, he's asking for like two hundred twenty five thousand a week. Ridiculous! That's not worth yeah. it. Um, and also, he's just gagging for a move, and you want someone to it just want Spurs. And Solanke, I, I like that idea. Archie Gray, I love that idea as well. Um, there's a there's a Dua Dua. Is he? He's that young player in, in league on, isn't he? Um, I, I think he's more inverted, isn't he? But again, I don't know if he he's not going to come in and elevate us to any any level. I think we need those types of signings. Um, yeah, exactly. But, and also, people are asking, like, it just feels like people are asking for different things as well. Like, it's just that you listen to some sections of the Spurs fan base and it's like, oh, we need to go out and buy players with that experience who have been there and, you know, are ready made for the first team. And then we're talking about players like this, where it's like, again, it's going to take them a while to make that step up and really understand what Postacoglu is asking them to do. Um, yeah, it's uh, the, the summer's going to be very interesting. I was excited going into the summer. I, I think I still am. But I think there's more of an eye on it now, I think. Whereas like a few weeks ago, it felt right. These are kind of the, the last few pieces of the puzzle in terms of what we can do to really go and challenge next year. Yeah. But now it feels very much like a more serious work needs to be be done almost a bit like last summer. Mm, yeah, I agree. Um, so moving on to um, Liverpool, are there any change? How First of all, how confident are you about going to Anfield? Because I'm for one bricking it. And I've got, I mean, there's sort of, 
I, f- I kind of feel dead inside in a different way to how I did last year, but it kind of parallels mm. the way we sort of went in there, sort of a bit emotionless mm. going into the game under Ryan Mason. Obviously, yeah. Now, I think yeah. I'm not saying like, oh, I feel motionless under uh, Postacoglu. I'm so excited for the future, but I feel like we're in this sort of standstill of we've, sec- we've pretty much secured the Europa League. There's nothing really to play for above that, and I'm not expecting us to win. And and yeah. we're in such a bad run of form, so I kind of feel dead inside in that regard. But, and last year we went there, not expecting anything. It was an unbelievable game, but it turned out shite. Um, but yeah. how... How 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 confident are you go uh, going into this game? Because they've got such added motivation as well, um, because of the reverse fixture. It just doesn't do us any favors, does it? No, I, yeah, I'm not really confident to be honest. I wasn't. I felt all right about this game a few weeks ago because it was like, and and kind of even over the last week because Liverpool have shown that real sense of vulnerability. It does feel like there's something happening there where it definitely feels like it's it, obviously it is petering to the end on the clock anyway. But it does feel like it's coming to the end. Um, obviously, the kind of rift with Salah, what happened last week, their inability to hold on to leads. Um, when they do get in front, the fact that they've come from behind so many times, how sustainable actually is that? How bullied they were in the, um, the most high derby at Goodison Park. Um, it, it felt like there was an opportunity to capitalise on that vulnerability. Van Dijk is probably going to be missing for the game as well, so it'll probably be Quanta at the back alongside maybe Canate if he's fit. Um but no, not not really at all. Um, you can. It feels like one of those games where Liverpool in front of goal have been incredibly poor recently. But you can guarantee they won't be against us. I think <laughs> yeah, they're, there yeah. be, they're there to be got at. I think they'll come onto us maybe more than Chelsea did. Um, they won't be quite as transitional as they were. They'll play higher up the pitch. They'll leave more space in behind, like they tend to do Liverpool. But I, there's a chance we can hurt them. But I'm I'm kind of written this game off already, to be honest, just because of our record there and the fact that we're not playing well enough at the moment. So poor on the ball, not brave enough. Even if Liverpool hand those chances to us, I can't see them us taking that initiative in that game, despite the fact that against Arsenal and Chelsea, we've had way more possession than the either two teams, which haven't been brave enough with it. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's kind of just got to the point now where it's just like, you don't want to be so negative about it, but it's just like, you feel like the players want the season to end. You kind yeah. of just want the season to end. Yeah, Again, like yeah. partly of, of what you were saying earlier, is part, most of that is because of how I and Arsenal are doing, obviously, as well. But, yeah, who knows, mate? Who knows? We could go there. And it could be the opposite of last year. We don't go 3 0 down inside 15 minutes. And we take the game to them and think, hang on a minute, hang on, hang on. Hang on. We're not, we're not What's there. going on here? You'd imagine Ange would have absolutely laid into those players as well, I think, after Thursday, in terms of he was dishing out that level of barking orders on the touchline and during the game. You can imagine what he said to him at half time and full time. Yeah, um, oh but God, yeah. in terms of changes, I would, I would, Ange obviously said that he, he changed the team up because he felt like they needed that refresh. I think he might need to roll the dice again, to be honest. and uh, and see what see what comes out. Obviously, left back is going to be under the microscope again. I thought, I mean, Emerson last night, he was poor, but it didn't. He didn't even really come into my thinking because you were having a player there, kind of playing out of position, who looks uncomfortable on that side, who looks uncomfortable on the ball anyway. But he's probably still the right option to go for. Again, there's been a lot of chat about from Dragasin's agent around him not well, getting game time. What do you think about that? Just, oh, he's you do not head. need that. It's the You're last not... thing we need. Oh my god! I get why he's frustrated, but. And part of me thinks, I just hope that those are the words that are coming from the agent and not the player. Because I think yeah. if you're a young player who's, willing, who's come, knowing that he's not going to break into the first team straight away, and that's your kind of attitude towards it, you can you can go, mate. We've yeah, got players please. in the... That's, it's causing hassle. Um, or maybe send him out on loan next year. I don't know. His agent is just it's just ridiculous, to be honest. Mm. But yeah, no, I, again, I, I don't think he'll change anything at the back. I think it'll probably still be Emerson. I think he probably went with Emerson at left on the left back, in left back, at left back last night because of Madawake, who caused us problems, and Palmer on that side wanting to drift in. Um, in midfield, I think I'd probably go with Bentoncourt, Basuma and Bentoncourt maybe uh, in there. I'd give Saar, I'd take Saar back out of the team. And I think in that forward line, I'd like to see Lo Celso. I'd like to see Lo Celso. Yeah, he was excellent when he came on against me. Yeah, exactly. He created the most chances. Yeah, he created the most chances. Uh, was it at the game or was it or was it at the Spurs, Spurs players? Spurs, uh, and he was on. He come on an 86th minute, and uh, so you'd like to see him start. Yeah, I would start him personally in that ten. I'd maybe go with Kuzevski out wide, uh, and Sonny on the other flank, or maybe Johnson play for some through the middle. I wouldn't play Madison again. Last night oh. came on. Ugh. 
I think the sales is banging, like he's knocking on the door. There. Yeah, it is. Like, it's, just, you, you, it's like your boss, you're killing me, man. It's like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think he'll, um, I think he'll go with, I think he'll go with the sales. I think last night, Gary's just raised an interesting point in the chat about Gallagher. Now, I think a lot of Spurs fans have turned their nose up at Gallagher throughout this time. I'm not saying he was amazing last night, and I'm not saying that Spurs should hope, that, you know, instantly buy him off the back of that. But I don't know why we're turning our nose up at a player like him when we really lack that technical quality for a lot in midfield anyway. I think his high energy, high press, he has got technical quality. And I actually think he would be a good signing for Spurs. Um, Do you personally. think that would actually happen, though? I can't see it happening for some I can't reason. See I can't see it. I can't. I, I still can't see him leaving Chelsea. I think they would eventually buckle and make and sign a new deal. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I would. I would like to see Lo Celso play tomorrow. For sure. Yeah, so it's me Sunday. Too. Fucking hell. Yeah, when me too. Is the game? It's Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> it's in like yeah, a couple of days. I, I've, it's coming so fast. You sort of don't even have a chance to sort of react there, um, yeah. which is worrying as well for like in a tackle. Uh, like we had two weeks to prepare for these games. Yeah, and, it feels um, like we're kind of stuck in a washing machine look, a bit with Spurs at the moment, just going round and around and around. It's just like our season's been kind of fragmented in terms of the the run of games, um, and the fact that we have we've gone like two weeks without playing, and all of a sudden you're playing three games in seven days or whatever. It's felt fragmented, but I think it's in these moments it's really sort of come on top and it just feels like we're in this sort of cycle, like we're stuck in this washing machine. It's like you can't just, you can't, I don't know, it just feels like everything's happening around us and we're not affecting games and we've got, sort of got stuck yeah. in this thing and it's just like, and the fan base, I think, have felt that as well. Um, so, yeah. yeah. We've got European football next year, so again, we're going to have to kind of get used to it. And that's it, we're going to have to add, add depth in the, in the, in the summer. Um before we do our score predictions, um, our, the Dragosin thing, uh, it really wound me up today. It really, yeah, really wound me up. Because I just, I just thought, uh, he, you'll give the Asians not doing him any favors because it's no. not going to be long until the f Spurs fans just fucking hate Dragosin because of his agent. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not even like Dragosin actually, and I don't know. I mean, I'm not out on him for this, but he hasn't done anything to like get on the side of the Spurs. Um, Spurs fans, he's not he's he's not spoken much. His agent speaks for him, it seems, and he yeah. doesn't. He, does, he seems very like introverted and 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 keeps himself to himself, which is fair enough. That's fine. Obviously, we haven't really seen him much on the pitch, and the things that stood out so far, stood out so far is he's had a, he's had an okay couple of games, and 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 he's and he's 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 been okay um, in the in his games. He has made a couple of mistakes, um, but. The agent thing's just really, really worrying. I think the whole fan base, because the last thing you want is a bad apple or something disrupting the dressing room or the cohesion. Um, and but I don't understand why we didn't do our checks on this when we were signing them. Yeah, yeah, um, that should, that should have been a red flag, wouldn't it? That should have been a red flag. Massively, I just, I just think he he has he doesn't like do he has, he's not a f like a fan favorite. He doesn't like really seem like he's interested in in pleasing the fans. I think he's interested in playing football. Okay, that's fine. And I'm not out on him because I've I've, I've I'm really um I think his sign is really promising. Um, yeah. But the age is such a red flag. Yeah, like I said, because it's just it's it, I mean what will happen next year if he's not playing it, it just puts pressure on unneeded pressure on us um at this point in time um Gary's asking do you know Scov Olsen he's the um the Danish winger isn't he um why'd you ask that is, is, I mean is he is he someone do you reckon we'll look for I mean he's a winger um and he, he we would look with him under Conte wouldn't we uh, yeah I think he's playing I think he's playing at Bruges with Noosa isn't he oh um, right, okay uh, he's a little bit older. I think he's 24. Um, plays predominantly on the right. Potentially, yeah. I've not, I've not seen too much of him. To he had honest. a bad, he had a bad World Cup. I remember that. I remember people hyping him up, talking that he could put, maybe play wing back under Conte, under Conte, um, and and he just yeah. didn't really, he didn't really perform. Um, so Ben, score predictions for the game against Liverpool. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking before Van Dyke was out in jail, I was like, I wonder if it's possible for a, has a defender ever scored a hat trick of headers from a corner before? <laughs> Imagine oh, Van yeah, Dyke no. just get, getting on that bash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no Van <laughs> well, Dyke. Well, he's not so... playing, is he? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. um, <laughs> Konza, or I... Konza, or whatever his name is. Yeah, I think we'll lose... scoring hat trick. Yeah, I hate predicting that we we're going to lose, but I, I think we'll lose three one. I think it'll be really three one. Yeah, Fuck I... me, that terrible. But also, we're going to win. We're going to win. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. Run it. 
run it run it back to 2011 run the last time we actually won there has it been that long what? Modric and Van der Vaart, yeah. Van der Vaart scored like a really nice volley from the edge of the box and Modric scored a penalty. It was like the end of days like under Hodgson, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, end yeah. of the season. sort of Same sort of time. Nothing really on the line. Yeah, Good get time, get, time, get your predictions yeah. down below. Gary's saying 3-0 uh, uh, to Liverpool. Oh, fucking hell. It's so depressing, isn't it? And, and yeah. sorry, the this money, has been the a money shouldn't prop, really. But... Yeah. Sometimes you have to have them. Sometimes you just, yeah. you know, I, I guarantee all of the people that did Spurs podcast today, nobody wanted to do them. Nobody, nobody, nobody wanted to talk about the game, did they? But no. you know, we do it because it's part of supporting a football team, and you can't just abandon um, the boys. And yeah. you can't just, you know, you're. <laughs> You've got to it, stick with if your eyes and if your support yeah. exactly, and if you know, if the support for Ange was as unwavering as some people as some people like to think that it was from their point of view, and now you're buckling. I think that says more about you and your kind of lack of patience in this in this process. Look, there's plenty that's to be what, frustrated that's what about. do. Exactly, yeah, exactly. They were doing all of this, mate, when they were eighth under Arteta in the first year, exactly. Yeah. And now they could win title this season. So yeah. let's just let's just remain calm. I hate the words trust the process, but I think you've just got to be patient, grit your teeth through to the end of the season and be excited about next year. Yeah, exactly. Um, sweet, mate. Uh, that's it, that's it. I'm saying... I don't want four to say. Nils, I don't want to say. Yeah, fucking hell! I said four one Spurs against Chelsea. I, I, I Romero like hat trick as well. Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, yeah, I was joking. I was joking. Um, yeah. yeah, I know. I, 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 I think we're gonna lose. To be honest, and, uh, and I don't want to be like negative or anything like that. But I don't know what score is gonna be. It's just I'm not. I haven't got a good feeling about it, and I kind of feel a bit like uh, just a bit cold, like dead inside going into the game. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. Yeah. Up the Spurs, up the Spurs, yeah, with them in the highs and lows, and I think exactly, I think that's what the fan base is. Definitely, is we definitely this is the journey that we're going to want to get on, and we have, and it's been amazing so far. We we have hit a few few bumps now, and it's and it's getting a bit, it's getting a bit insufferable when we keep keep seeing the same recurring issues like set pieces, etc. But yeah, it's all part of the it's all part of the the process because next season so, when it was all part of the master plan, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, trust the process. Be like, well, we sound like fucking twenty nineteen Arsenal fans, but yeah. it's it's true. I mean, look how it turned out for them, unfortunately. So yeah, yeah. Um, sweet mate, legends. Ben, where can we find yourself? And where can we find the Darren and Doing Pod? By the way, if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button. On yeah, subscribe. YouTube. If you're in Follow the chat, still watching. Yeah, exactly. We're going to start. I think we're going to. You know, there'll be some teething problems and bumps along the way. We kind of found that this is a, f a second pod uh, recording this on Streamlabs. Um, there was a few video issues in the first one. I think it's my connection probably a bit more than anything. But I'm moving out next week. The broadband is secured, Will. So it's in the bag. Nice. So Let's next go. pod. Probably not next pod because we'll probably record on Monday, won't we? After Liverpool, but. The Burnley preview pod, which I'm sure you're all buzzing oh, it's for. Be unbelievable. Way, it's going to be new setup, new background, and new internet. So hopefully you'll be able to see me in glorious um, 1080p rather than looking like a potato. Um, but probably loves potatoes. So, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, probably probably got excited. Uh, there. Exactly, potato. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, make sure, yeah, make sure you subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. Follow on Spotify and Apple. Leave a rating as well. That massively, massively helps out. We massively appreciate it. Leave a review as well leave your comments in the comment section on youtube share it with your mates look you know we know there's a lot of spurs podcasts out there but if you want to squeeze another one into your rotation then we're your boys do you know what i mean um <laughs> lots of exciting stuff coming over the summer um and then you can find me tiktok ben bowman twitter ben bowman as well we've streamed this on twitter by the way as well and i think we had some decent views so if anyone's still watching on twitter and who hasn't just clicked off then um massively appreciate you, you lot um yeah, so thanks, thanks for the support yeah. so far from everyone yeah it's been, it's exactly. been amazing thanks for everyone up. in the in the chat um getting involved as well yeah yeah up, up the fucking up spurs. spurs up the fucking spurs legends have a good catch you later everyone.